British restaurants were once a laughing stock, not anymore. Today, we have some of the most exciting restaurants in the world. But which are the best? And what are the restaurants that you really love? I asked you, and the response was amazing. We had over 12,000 nominations for restaurants all over the UK. Together with the best restaurant team, I've chosen the best, and tonight, my two favorite restaurants will be going head to head. They may be good, but do they have what it takes to go right to the top? Over the last six months, my team and I have been all over the country Simon, checking out your best restaurant nominations. And tonight, my search continues with another of the UK's favorite cuisines, Thai. Over the last 10 years, Thai food has taken Britain by storm. Even the pubs are doing it now. But really, top-notch, authentic Thai restaurants are so hard to find. Actually, can I have a chance, please? Thank you. I've eaten some great restaurants in Thailand, and I know that secret to authentic Thai food. It's all about getting that balance right between the sweet, bitter, hot, sour, and salty flavors. Tonight's contenders are going to have to be at the top of the game to impress me. From hundreds of Thai nominations, I've handpicked my top two to go head to head for a place in the semi finals. From St Andrews, Scotland's golfing capital, it's Nam Jim. On fire! <laughs> I just love to show, you know, how good Thai food is. i just very proud. They'll be fighting it out with a colossal Thai restaurant from the heart of London, Mango Tree. You order one some some veg? I'm always fired up. I don't need Gordon stick a rocket up my ass. I'm there, I'm ready. Nam Jim and the Mango Tree will be battling to prove they have what it takes to be my best Thai restaurant. For the first of three grueling challenges, I've dispatched 30 fervent foodies who will descend on each restaurant in turn and order en masse. First stop, 50 miles north of Edinburgh, it's Bonnie St Andrews. This town is not only famous for its golf venue, but also Nam Jim, an amazing Thai restaurant. It's run by a dynamic duo, husband and wife, Sandy and B, and they pride themselves on cooking authentic Thai cuisine. Today, I'm expecting nothing less than a hole in one. Hello. How are you, Welcome my darling? Welcome to our kitchen. Mm. Good to see you. Mm. Anyone Scottish in the brigade? No, we are Thai. Sorry, well, husband. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> the only Scot in the village. <laughs> uh. The first and only Thai restaurant in St Andrews, Nam Jim's charm and authentic cuisine has taken the town by storm. It's just simple but perfect. Determined to wow the locals, Bees even created an inspired signature dish using Scotland's national fare, haggis. Very spicy. It doesn't actually taste like haggis, it tastes like pork, doesn't it? <laughs> That's delicious. Love it. What I love most about this place is their <laughs> chef, B, she's bursting with energy. She's happy in her cooking, her staff are happy. Good. And it shows in the food. Amazingly, B had never cooked professionally until she and her husband, Sandy, opened Nam Jim eight years ago. Successful businesses is all in the detail, and we, we kind of uh, try and be the best we can be. We use the best ingredients from Thailand, great service. We just try and do everything as good as it can be, don't yeah. we? This has won the restaurant a huge following of celebrity golf fans. This is my Hall of Fame. That's um, Tiger Woods' mother, Mr. Sean Connery here. Mr. Samuel Jackson, he just said, thank you very much, your food is wonderful. I was so proud. Now, B and Sandy's hard-fought reputation is about to be tested to its limits. My coach full of hungry diners are just round the corner. All 30 of them will expect a faultless meal in just two hours. I'm going to be over everything, not just in the dining room, but in the kitchen as well. Thank you. And as you know, I miss nothing. Okay. I'll be spotting okay. everything. Manager Sandy is in charge of keeping all my 30 diners happy. He and his team must explain B's unique Thai dishes. One of the house specialities is the Thai Scottish haggis. It, uh, we can also make that with a vegetarian haggis, which is essentially pulses and nuts and oatmeal. B, the orders are starting to roll now, yeah? Yes. Yeah. As well as the haggis, B's menu includes vegetarian jungle curry and tamarind duck with pak choy. One tamarind duck. Two lamb. 
to front. As fast as front of house send the orders through, B and her efficient Thai brigade are knocking out amazing food. Thai cuisine, it's quick. It's not a long-winded style of cooking. It's done in a very fresh and sort of rapid way. Sandy, the only Brit on the team, is the all-important link between the dining room and the kitchen. Are you at your weakest in here when they're speaking fluent Thai? Or... I just kind of ignore what they're talking about and I can see kind of what they're doing more than anything. They've been working together for so long. It's a really well-oiled machine. Well, it's not a race. For me, the standard's far more important. You know that? OK. If the starters are anything to go by, the standards don't seem to be a problem. That's like the biggest I've ever tasted. It's exceptional. It's absolutely beautiful. These brigade are on fire. But at this hectic pace, it's vital that every member of the team is on top of every detail. Is this the vegetarian one? Vegetarian. Sandy, stop, stop, stop. Coconut cream? There's no coconut cream on there. No, it's not. No. Before you take anything, you've got to tell her. Yeah. It's there to have a control here, isn't it? <laughs> so you're taking dishes, she doesn't know it's gone. Yeah. One lamb cutlets as well, guys. And that's all the starters done for everybody, then. Sandy thinks all the starters are out. But a quick scan of the dining room reveals he's missed a whole table. How are you both? Good. 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 What did you order? A spicy haggis. Mm -hmm. Lamb cutlets. Lamb cutlets. Sandy, are we missing an order? We don't, we don't have to too fast starters. All the tables are taken, yeah? As front of house boss, Sandy should be all over this. So that's, so that's all gone. That's I've all done it all. Yeah, no, so this, that's fine. no, that's all gone. Really? Yes, I do. Uh, hang on. Are you sure? I think yeah. they, they don't take the lamb. I've I, I took it. Yeah. C3, they've got their food. Yeah. So it smells nice. Can't taste it, but it smells nice. <laughs> We're missing a chili or something. Yeah, it's two C3. That's the only thing I've put. Okay, no problem. But two C3s as opposed to C2. Yeah. yeah. And you don't help matters when you take food. Don't tell her where You've it's gone. Got it. I know. I'm just uh, the fly in the ointment. OK, enjoy. At last, the missing table get their food. OK, OK, main cost B2, please. Okay. Whilst B's kitchen ramps up for the mains, Sandy's front of house team seem more and more disorientated. We've got more waiters in here now than we have chefs. Yeah. Is that one more? Lamb's here. Do you know where you're going, Sandy? Sandy looks a little bit sort of lost there. Lost. You know, yeah, you know when he comes in. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> pressure like this. They just like to like to be out of the way. So you handle pressure better than he does. Yes. <laughs> Despite his confusion, Sandy's got nearly all the main courses and desserts out with 45 minutes to spare. And it's soon clear how he's done it. A bit weird that she's eating her dessert while I'm having my main course. I don't think we expected that when we ordered it. You know, when you ordered, I thought I would be watching you eat your starter and then we'd have our meal together. I'm sure it's best to serve the starter, yeah. gap, main course, gap, and then dessert. But we thought rather than somebody sit there eating while the partner has nothing for 20 minutes, it was less rude for somebody to be eating at the same time. I know that's personally how I would prefer it. It doesn't make sense. No, I, I agree. We haven't seen it so far in the competition. Okay, last table going out, guys. Today, B and her kitchen team really have scored a hole in one. I went for the uh, Thai vegetarian haggis, which was really exquisite. The food was fantastic, start to finish. It was delicious, really knocked my socks off. After the food, really, I'm not bothered, it was good. Worth, Worth waiting for. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. With such fantastic food, the weak link here is clearly front of house. I've spoken to the diners, and not everybody enjoyed having their dessert and the main course at the same time. Dessert is a sort of sweet grand finale, not to be eaten opposite a duck. The saving grace today is that everyone loved the food. That's, for me, the most important. Tighten up, get the service as good as the food. Yes, You're 99% of the way there. Next, Nam Jim's heavyweight rivals from London are up against the ropes. The thighs roll. Yeah. yeah. It's the same table. Oh dear. And one of my undercover diners cops it. 
Yeah. I'm not paying for it. You sure? Oh, yeah. I need to call the police then. What? I need to call the police then. Call the police? Yeah. Oh, my God. My best restaurant hit squad of 30 diners are on their way to the second Thai restaurant, battling for a semi-final place in my nationwide competition. Just a stone's throw from Buckingham Palace is one of the most popular Thai restaurants in the capital. It's Mango Tree. Hello. So, Hi, how are you? Good to see you. I'm so happy to be here. Um, Come on, let's go. I forget how big this restaurant is. Nock has been front of house manager of this huge 160-seat restaurant since it opened 10 years ago. I love Mango Tree. It's my baby. This is my life, my inspiration. Even the kitchen is huge as here well. We go. How are you? Very nice to meet you. So nice to see an uh, Englishman heading a uh, Thai <laughs> kitchen. Where are you from? I'm Thailand. You're from Thailand? Yep. Thank God for that. <laughs> Head chef Mark's passion for Asian cuisine led him to work in Vietnamese and Japanese kitchens before coming to the mango tree. What we're trying to create is that essence of the Thai street food served in an eloquent way. His accomplished take on Thai cuisine attracts 350 diners a night on a busy weekend. This is one of my favourite restaurants, probably, in London. You feel like you're in a five-star restaurant. I really enjoy coming here. It's one, it's, it's one of those places that you can really trust. For Mark, controlling such a vast operation is made harder by a less-than-ideal restaurant layout. With the kitchen and dining room on different floors, all the food is sent by lift. Two more grilled pusan, please. What I can cancel, yeah? I'm nervous with all these earpieces. And he's like someone from the secret police. To coordinate food and service, the staff use radio headsets. And if all else fails, there's always the phone. Yeah, it's coming right now. When the customer happy, when the staff happy, I am very proud of what I'm doing. With Knox Battalion of Waiters and Mark's revered food, this huge restaurant should find my first test a doddle. Every restaurant I've tested so far has struggled with my coach load of 30 diners. Arriving and ordering all at once, they'll expect every dish to be cooked to perfection. I want my diners to leave tonight, you know, on cloud nine. I want their jaws on the floor. Really push it out, yeah? Okay. And good luck. Okay, thank, thank you very much. much. We got a new order. Two mien cam, one chicken satay. Yeah. We're just going to do what we do best, and that's the quality and the consistency of the food. And you don't want to be complacent. If there's 30 pad thai, there'll be 30 great pad thai. It's that simple. Marcus handpicked a small selection of his most popular dishes for my guests tonight, including shrimp tom yum, chicken satay, and tiger prawn pad thai. He's taking these Thai classics to a new level of sophistication, with truly authentic flavors and exquisite presentation. But upstairs, front of the house, I discover he's made a big mistake with his menu. There's no vegetarian option. We can speak to chef, they can prepare whatever you like. I think we actually would like to speak to the manager yeah, and like just find manager, out yeah. why there's not a vegetarian option. Six meals here and not even one of them are vegetarian. It's completely unacceptable. Can I help you, ma'am? Uh, yeah. Um, I do apologize for this time, but all of the dish in here can be substituted to vegetarian. That's not a problem at all. You don't need to worry about it. Knox's professionalism has calmed a potential mutiny. Meanwhile, the fish and meat eaters are loving the starters. Beautiful flavors complement each other. Amazing, I would definitely recommend. But there's a serious problem with one diner's chicken satay. The chicken cooked, it's, it seems quite fleshy inside and quite pink. It's absolutely... Yeah, sorry, that, I mean, that's, uh, excuse me, that's pink though, no? If you don't mind taking that back, that would be great. Thank you. That would take another five, ten minutes, is that right? Okay. Sure. Fine. You don't expect it from a top restaurant to ask for my food to be sent back to the kitchen. New order. One chicken satay. Well done. They're raw, you'll eat them. Both the chicken satay starter and the baby chicken main course are half-cooked pre-service and finished off to order by commie chef Nielsen. On this occasion, he's got it badly wrong. If he part cooks a chicken, you wouldn't expect it to go out pink. No. What you get that down the pot? It's very annoying when we're dealing with the people that we are dealing with tonight. There's no excuse for it. 
Mark's been quick to send up a replacement dish, but I want to see how well this lift system works. In my restaurant, I can bark orders at my waiters over the pass. But here, every dish that leaves the kitchen must travel up two flights of stairs by dumb waiter to Mikey. It's his job to send the food to the right table. Two suits. What they sending? What table is that? I don't got any idea what the table is. It. Well, they because should tell you what table, table it is before they send the fucking thing, no? Yeah. Huh? I actually don't know never what is coming in the late. I can only guess. Seeing the food and pay it to the ticket. Okay, not. He's sending food, but no one's told him what table in terms of you haven't yeah, got a ticket. Yeah, I don't got a ticket for this one. Yeah. So it's just sat there dying. How about on table six? Just find out on table six. Please. Jesus. Come on. It's always like this. Yeah, it's always like this? Yeah. Fuck me, that's for 30. Can you imagine what it's like when you've got 300? Okay. Everything in the lift, send it. In your order. As service ramps up, the system is falling apart. Oh, is it the main? It is, yes. Could we wait while they finish the starter, then bring our main meal? Oh, yes, okay. no problem. But most of the mistakes are picked up by the waiting staff before they hit the dining room. What's wrong with that? Send this down, yeah, and make a new one. He sent out wrong. Yeah. So I need, I need this instead, OK? Send it down. And what's that? What... This is still right. It's not missing. Uh, odd. I don't got a ticket for a uh, Gayang, uh, but I go. What table is it? Send it down to you. This is crazy. Uh... That's fucking hell. What a mess. Lots of great food go nowhere fast. Oh. So odd, odd. If you send me again, they will 38. They will 38. They got the main cause already. Jesus Christ. That lift is busier than fucking Paris Hilton's knickers. Yes. Huh? Oh. Damn. This lift could be a nemesis. You'll be given an absolute total pain in the ass. He doesn't know what he's sending up there. It leaves here immaculate. It goes up in the lift. They grab it out. It pisses down the side. Those diners are going to get pissed off with that. Do you know what I mean? It's nothing short of a miracle that all 30 diners eventually received the correct food. Mm -hmm. Oh, looks lovely. Yeah, look. My goodness, that is spicy. It's nice. Really nice, though. It's beautiful. Worth waiting for. Mm. I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. Died and gone to heaven. But it seems once again this table has got a problem with their food. It's undercooked. It's undercooked? Yeah. It's not cooked. After the earlier cock up with the undercooked chicken starter, unbelievably, it's happened again. This is little. Oh, it's it's yeah. it's too bad to cook more, so sorry. Yeah. So let me just take it back. I'm always afraid for undercooked, undercooked yes. chicken, because it could kill you. Mm, yes. <laughs> now we're looking. Just the... Yeah, just on the bone. The, just on the bone. Fuck. Damn. So, Diane, come back. Raw. Mark is on the warpath. How's it possible? Huh? You're not checking any of them? I mean, look, you're fucking pre-cooking them. Is it that hard? Nobody wants to eat raw chicken. You? Huh? To my horror, the true scale of the chicken scandal is only just unfolding. That piece is raw. It's definitely raw. The other yeah. bits were okay, but this, yeah. just this one, that piece. So she's had one more poison coming. The same problems. The same again. Yeah? He also had it. Now what? I'll take one there. Two more portions of cream chicken, so they think it make sure it's well done this time. What's wrong with that one? It's the same again, well again. No. Uh, it's the same table. Same table, yeah, 36. Yeah. He's right, not to think. Yeah? The thigh's raw. Yeah, uh, yeah. Shit. Oh, dear. This is the last thing I expected from this incredible restaurant. Head chef Mark looks as shocked as me. This is what we're talking about. Quality and the consistency. I'm the one who looks the crap.
Fuck me, that felt like 300. It did. Huh? Well, it's surprising. There's two, two tables that kind of messed it up. Lovely. Thank you. Right, fingers crossed for this one. <laughs> this piece is OK. It's stunning. It's really, really good. It's, it's a very big difference from the last plate I got. It's a credit to knock and a front of house team that the majority of my diners seem unaffected by the chaos. Really, really nice, really tasty. And the service is amazing today, really, really good. They're really accommodating when I said that I didn't like spicy food and stuff. The pad thai was really, really nice and mild. We're gonna... Just a sincere apology on behalf of Mango Tree to everyone uh, because there was a problem with the menu, the vegetarian. Our particular waiter has been absolutely wonderful with us, really attentive, and took a great interest into our experience here at the Mango Tree. In the end, most of my diners seem happy. But for Mark, it's been one of the toughest nights of his career. Uh, right, where should we start? I know what you're capable of. You only have to read the comments to why this restaurant is in this competition and the support you've got from customers is phenomenal. Totally. Then my diners arrive and, unfortunately, they haven't had that same experience. That's where it hurts for me. Come back. And come back strong. Absolutely. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Let me throw that away. Yeah. Throw it all away. Sick of looking at it. Every time something isn't right, you know, I do take it very personally. It's no reflection that our team can't cook, but situations do happen sometimes. It's how you rectify them is the most important thing, and, and hopefully they, um, they don't happen again. Now I'm Jim and the Mango Tree have survived the coast trip. Now I want to meet up to review their performances. Or so they think. They have no idea I've been spying on them with the help of undercover diners who've been filming secretly. Simon Davis is a professional secret diner with an eagle eye for weak spots in restaurant food and service. Sarah Durden Robertson is a top food consultant who's been expertly dissecting menus, food and service for years. I've asked them both to be demanding to see how the restaurants respond. Oh. This is just a bit too spicy for me. Could I order the chicken? I'd really like to have that, but I ordered this one. <clears throat> First up is Nam Jim. And I'm about to show them a front of house fiasco that no one is prepared for. Unknown to both of you, I sent in a secret diner. That's very cunning. <laughs> and this is what he saw. Good evening, how are you? Have you got a table booked in the name of Duncan? Ah, that's the Thai haggis. Thank you very much. That haggis is a creative idea, it's fun, it's inventive, the spice level's perfectly pitched. It's the sort of thing that could set this restaurant apart from other Thai restaurants in the country. Absolutely loved it. And that kind of wow factor, my god. Can I try a glass of the, the white <laughs> Thai wine? Oh, do you? Can I just try a little bit? I don't know, I've never had Thai wine before. I don't yeah. know what it's going to well, be like. If you, don't, if you don't like it, you know, what am I going to do with the, the bottle? You know, if I... OK, can you bring a bottle, please? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Put it... If I open it, it, it means you have to have it. Yeah. Well, if it's not very nice wine, I won't want to drink it. Wow. That's not how we offer wine services, is it? <laughs> Sandy? No, that's a bit of a shock to me. Yeah. OK, if you don't like it, you don't have to have it. OK. okay. Yeah. I don't think I do like that. Sorry? I don't think I do like that, actually. Yeah, I told you before, but uh, you know when to open it? I know, but I told you that if I didn't like it, I, I wouldn't have it. That waiter actually looked, looked at me and went... Would he behave like that if you were there, Sandy? 
I think not. What I'd more likely to do would be probably to come and ask what to do about the situation. Damn. It's not ideal. It is appalling. I I'm just shocked, in all honesty. What? I told you before, when, when I'm I... not paying for it. You sure? Oh, yeah. I need to call the police there. What? I need to call the police there. Call the police? Yeah. Basically, I told you before, if I have to... Hold on a minute. Way, I asked for a glass of Thai wine. Uh, and OK. Before, and do are, you gonna, are you going to let me speak? OK. And you give me the evil eye and you say to me, I'm going to... You have to pay for that well, wine. Exactly. And, then, and, then, and, then, and then you say to me, if you don't pay for that wine, I'm going to go and call the police. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm going to do. It's absurd. You call that decent service, do you? Pay for, I'll pay for it, but I mean, that's just absurd. That ranks as about the most aggressive service I've ever seen in my life. Oh, my God. I'll call the police. I'm lost for words. <laughs> Incredible. What I would love to happen is I'll put out an olive branch to the manager. He takes it. We kind of kiss and make up, figuratively speaking. Excuse me. Hi there. Hi there. Um, what's happening with the, uh, the wine? To be honest, you know, like, I did mention, I'm not going to charge you full price, but I have to charge you half price. So okay, but, you know, All right, but I didn't, you know, I did all this business with the police. I thought it was very strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to argument with the customer. Well, it's the only thing I can take it off, you know, like... Yeah. You shouldn't and, threaten to call know, the police. I know, I know. I'm, I'm really sorry for that. Yeah. Is that, is that okay? Yeah. OK, thank you. Sorry. OK. You can see in his face, he knew. You shouldn't be threatened to call the police. Sandy, how does it make you feel when you see that style of service being run in your business? Out of yeah, I'm, I'm both shocked, very embarrassed, and uh, not more than a little bit angry. Overall, that's been a, a very energising experience on many levels. I'm enthusiastic and excited about the quality of the food. The service has been smiling and courteous, apart from the one blip. And I'm leaving here thinking I would definitely come back here and I would tell people about it. And they're the two things that when you're a restaurant owner, you really want your diners to leave thinking about. Some night you had. Wow. It will be corrected. That will never happen again. Obviously, the gentleman has, has come away with a, a decent experience, apart from that one blip, as he called it. But it, to be honest, it's difficult for me to look beyond that blip. Everything you did was perfect, didn't it? <laughs> right. uh, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm upset, and I think it's a combination of uh, being very excited and very happy, and then one minute, and then going the complete opposite end of the spectrum the next. And, um, you know, so at the minute, Sorry. I think I'm just a little bit lost for words. I'm just very, you know, a bit angry. For someone to point out of this, you know, because of the bad service and then the thing, it's not, it's not that, not what we want. Our customers come first in everything. I hope we haven't blown our chances within the competition. Um, we're going to have to work hard. Next. The chefs feel the heat in their final battle at my flagship restaurant. What's wrong with that? They said the chicken is undercooked. Fuck. Tonight, two amazing restaurants are going head to head in a competition to find my best restaurant in Britain. New order, two Tom Young gum. Now it's the turn of London's Thai culinary giant, Mango Tree, to get the spy treatment. How are you? Are you well? Yes, good. Welcome. We've actually been tested twice. Mm. Because since I've left the mango tree, I sent in my secret diners. Right. Yeah, and here's what they saw. On the coach trip, head chef Mark was crestfallen when undercooked chicken was sent back to the kitchen. Manager Knox's supervision kept them on side. But how do they do when I'm not watching? I've got a small plank on my table. That is filthy. They've got all these plastic wipe clean covers, but they never wipe them clean. It's got food caked all over it. It's revolting. 
Nothing more disappointing. First touch of the menu, dirty. That glass noodle salad is so spicy. It's too spicy for you. Is there any way I could have it, but just a bit less spicy? I would say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <gasps> wow. Wow, fantastic. That was really quick as well. They've brought some of the sauce separately in case I want to control my own measure, but that's exactly what you should do. Exactly. Uh, well handled. Great. When somebody says they want something a certain way, mm -hmm. we don't understand what their less spicy is. Sure. So it gives them the opportunity to, to do that themselves. But it was handled brilliantly. It's not very relaxing, the fact that I don't know what they're doing. There's someone going on the back tables, pulling this serving mats from under the cutlery. So every table he does, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Every time they do it, I feel like I've overstayed my work and they're trying to clear the tables. Would you please get out now? I feel like saying I'm terribly sorry. Am I in your way? What a shame when they feel that awkward. And the noise is ridiculous, especially when you're trying to eat dinner. The food was fantastic, faultless, loved it. Complained about a couple of things, sent them back, and they completely dealt with it. But their customer care is pretty shockingly bad. It's a bizarre place. It's neither one thing nor the other. They care and they don't care. Uh, food, delicious, second to none. But that attention to detail with the service, it has to be worked at for everybody. You forget that sometimes when you're doing such big numbers. So don't take it personally, take it professionally. Absolutely. It was interesting. Yeah. It was a bit of an eye-opener, what we saw on the film. It is upsetting. If I were a customer, I, I, would, I would say the same. So I'm um, very disappointed. I don't feel let down by the service because we are the team. We take the pats on the back together, but we take the knocks together as well, and we will fix it. There is more to the competition, and we don't want this to be the end for us. Both restaurants have been left reeling by these revelations, but there's still everything to play for. For their final battle, I'm bringing the chefs face to face in my flagship restaurant. I've challenged each chef to create one amazing dish for 20 guests. But to guarantee a place in the semi-finals, it'll have to be the finest dish of their lives. Well, happy to be here. So. <laughs> it's a dream. So we both very, very proud. If we win, that would be brilliant. It was our customers that have put us where we are. It speaks volumes that they're proud of what we're doing. Everything is focused on today in winning. Right, huge pressure test, this one, to cook 20 stunning dishes. Make them taste absolutely delicious. Create that level of perfection. Sadly, one of you will be leaving the competition and one of you will be going through to the semi-final. Make sure it's you. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Both restaurants will be attempting to impress me with a dish made from chicken. The perfect meat to complement the heady, aromatic herbs and spices used in Thai cooking. Both the mango tree and Nam Jim have had their ups and downs, and I'm hoping that they put all that aside and they focus on those 20 dishes and use that as they come back. Outside, a dining room full of VIPs, all with a passion for Thai food, will help me judge both dishes tonight. Including Thai cookery writer, Oi Cheap Chai Sara and one of my all-time favourite Thai chefs, Patria Wirapan. All the front of house teams can do is wait and hope. An order, two covers away, table three, the mango tree, two baby chicken. Yes, chef. For mango tree, head chef Mark is sticking his neck out with a new complex dish made from the baby chickens that almost floored him on the coach trip. He was gutted when undercooked chicken was sent out three times. Cooked enough. I just hope he knows what he's doing today. I'm happy with that. Oh, lovely flavour. Beautiful smell. You're quite fond of baby chicken, aren't you? I am. We've changed it from, obviously, when we've done it in the restaurant. Yep. We've learnt from our mistakes of, yep. um, you know, making sure it cooks. It's why I wanted to do it. Good. I'm not going to run away from anything. Good. Very bold to put that baby chicken back on the menu again. Mark's exposed. There's only two of them, him and Odd. So it's... Pure focus. For Nam Jim, I'm worried that B is still shaken by my secret diner's bombshell. I'm so hot. Being in here, golden kitchen, I'm nervous. 
I don't want this to affect the quality of our dish. First of all, I want to clear something really important. It's gone, the wine. I want you to set that completely behind you. Okay. Today is about you and your food, and then show me that passion. Yeah? I will. Tonight, Bee's sticking to what she does best. Authentic food packed with flavour. Marinated chicken with pan-fried oyster mushrooms and a punchy basil puree. But to elevate this dish to my restaurant's three Michelin star standards, she needs to be completely on the ball. Four rice, please, Bee. Service, please. Table six. Come on, guys. The food's hanging around too long. B is making simple mistakes. All right, now, please. Now, I'm Jim. Yeah. Two chicken. Yeah. B, no, you're not even listening sorry. to me. After that, it's two more, not four more. Okay, You've got chef. four chicken in there. Okay, chef. Okay. So, do you want to take two chicken out? Uh, this is not. Too... All right, table B, yes. after okay. this, okay, it's okay, only sorry. two more. Okay. You've got okay. four in the pan, okay. so why don't you take two out? I will do. Four. B's lack of focus is beginning to worry me. I need to see her really step up to the mark. He's doing OK. It's just messy at the moment. I'm rushing. Let's focus on the service, B. Yeah? Let's focus on these, okay. yeah? B, she's had a rocky ride up into this stage. I want that to be put behind her and just focus on her 20 plates and come back, but come back strong. Service, please. Table six, as quick as you can, please, yeah? Thank you. Oh, I'm so nervous. But we we getting there. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's been a struggle, but she's got the food out. Service, please. Much better, yeah? Well done, B. Good job. Thank you. Go, please. First dish we try will be from Nan Chin. Enjoy. The chicken is very subtle, and the sauce is beautiful. It's lovely aroma, but presentation, I'm not quite... I'm quite confident. I thought Bee's dish was excellent. After his chicken disaster, Mark has determined every piece will be cooked to perfection today. How long, please, Mark? Four portions, table two in three minutes. His final touch is to grill it, to turn the skin a delicious golden brown. Mark, your dish, is it supposed to be crispy, the skin? Semi-crispy. Semi semi I don't semi want it to come across as burnt. Good. First table, table five, please, yeah? You happy with that, Mark? No, no. What's that fragrance again? Jasmine? Yes. Very nice. Mark has gone the extra mile, and his food looks wonderful. Go, please, table five, thank you. This wow. is the mango tree. Beautiful, yeah. It looks beautiful. Very delicate. I, I am happy. I'm so happy. So exciting about it. From the mango tree. You can see from my face, this is wow factor for me. The finishing line is within sight when the unthinkable happens. Excuse me, um, I'm just a bit disappointed because actually, as you can see, this is not really cooked. Let me show it to the, the chef. And okay, thanks very says, much. Thank me, you. Let me take it away for you. Thank you. Good. Table six, please, service. I need you to... What's not happy there? with this, chef. They said the chicken is undercooked. Where's it under... Oh, fuck it's it. Fine. Yeah. It is there, Mark. It's not even coming off the bone there. You can see it clear as day. Mm. Fuck me. Fuck. Damn, I'm so pissed off. Pink chicken comes back again, and if there was ever a time not to serve it, it's right now not good enough. Four more, Mark, please. How long? Just give me time so I can tell the dining room. Three minutes. Three minutes to table one, please. Tell Rob. Don't worry about the leg, yeah? Fuck the leg. Pretty pissed off. You made to eat my own words. I'm not happy. Mark, have you checked all them? You see them underneath as well, yeah? Yeah. Go. Table one, please, yeah? Even I could never have guessed service would end like this for Mango Tree. It's been a challenging night for everyone. But it's time to find out what my diners thought of both dishes, starting with Mango Tree. Let's talk chicken. Well, ours wasn't cooked. No, well, that was a uh, ridiculous mistake. Uh, yeah. My apologies. It just it wasn't even leaving the bone, was it? It was probably still clucking. Fortunately, not all my diners had the same experience. It looked great when it came. Yes. And when we tasted it, the herbs go right through it. Better than six, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I preferred the mango tree because I loved the chicken on the bone. It kept it really moist, very, very tasty. And the broth with it just worked. Loved it all. I had to go for Namjin because I like the sauce so much. 
it's beautifully marinated, subtle, and then you've got the sauces complement. Perfect combination. From Nam Jim? Yes, and the chicken is lovely, but the rice is a bit too much water. I mean, you know yes. your rice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. Now I face a very difficult choice. Which one of these two restaurants should go through to the semi-finals? For Gordon Ramsay to say, you're the best, that has meant a lot. I would never forget it. Neither restaurant has been without fault, but even good restaurants have their bad days. I'm obviously hoping that the other 19 dishes make a bigger impact and impression than the one. But can I forgive Mark for undercooking chicken again? Two top Thai contenders, Nam Jim and Mango Tree, have completed a nail-biting service in my flagship restaurant. Both chefs have produced an incredible dish, but both have fallen short of perfection. Now I have to choose which restaurant is truly deserving of a place in the semi-final. But first, I need to make my own judgment on both dishes. Nam Jim, it looks slightly clumsy. Mm. Chicken's delicious. It's got that nice crisp texture to the outside. You smear that sauce on top of that chicken, the whole thing just comes alive. Not eye-catching, but mouth-watering in taste. Mango Tree have gone the extra mile, and it looks like it's been done with great finesse. Flair, lovely. The broth is almost like a sort of Tom Yum gun. It's like two dishes in one. Rice, soft, fluffy, and Incredibly fragrant. Nice little spray at the end with that jasmine. Really nice. Chicken's delicious, but I'm just slightly nervous about that soft, chewy skin. Should be crispy. Two remarkable Thai restaurants, but only one can continue through to the next round. OK. Right, I brought both restaurants here to give you an opportunity, a unique opportunity to really cook like you've never cooked before. Nam Jim, I saw the dish. It didn't look the most appetizing. Having been to your restaurant and seen the style in which you deliver food, it was a little bit of a surprise to see something so basic as that. I tasted the chicken and bang, it was just, yeah, it was amazing. However, at this stage in the competition, this round is not won on a single dish. Nam Jim, Secret Diners, no experienced food like that. Absolutely love that food. Haggis in a Thai restaurant. Doesn't even sound right. But for you to turn into something that good, very few restaurants can do that anywhere. Mango Tree, the fascinating thing with you, Mark, is you're not even, you're not even from Thailand. Yeah, you seem to have this magic with Thai cuisine that is a, uh, is a gift. And when mango tree's at its best, it's untouchable. Sent in our secret diner. Absolutely blown away with that food. I mean, really, really blown away with that food. To do the Busan again, at this stage in the competition, I admire the balls. It was sweet. It was delicious and authentic. How could I criticise that? How could I look at that dish and tell you how to do it better. I didn't have to. For the first time in this competition, a dish came back. You've left me with a very tough decision. The restaurant going through to the semi-final is... Nam Jim. Congratulations. Oh. Well done. Yes. Ooh, good job. Well done, you. With your touch and the amount of experience you have with Thai cuisine, I know you've got more coming. Very disappointed. You know, I'm sorry for letting Odd and Nock and the team and our customers down, but, you know, that's the way it goes. You know, I uh, wish Nan Jim all the luck, but... I'm pretty pissed off at the moment. 
someone never told me before I'm, I'm, I'm good and I'm, I'm into this competition. So it means so much for me. It's a bit mind boggling for us. We were all very, very proud and a little bit shocked and stunned, I think. I'm so happy. What an amazing day and two great Russians. I'll be sorry to say goodbye to the mango tree. But at the same hand, we've opened the door to something quite magical in St Andrews because they are a force to be reckoned with. But for Nam Jim now, the competition really starts because the next stage of this competition is going to be even tougher. Next time, my two best French restaurants will be fighting for a place in the semi-final. Sauce on the plate. Service, please. An ambitious chef running his own version of Versailles. So you can sit down and be treated like a king for a night. Takes on a Gallic gastronome championing a peasant revolution in Edinburgh. I'm not cooking for kings, I'm cooking for simple guys like me, for country boys. But only one will make it through to the next round and win the chance to become my best restaurant. This is it, the Battle of the French. Good luck. British restaurants were once a laughing stock, not anymore. Today we have some of the most exciting restaurants in the world. But which are the best? And what are the restaurants that you really love? I asked you and the response was amazing. We had over 12,000 nominations for restaurants all over the UK. Together with the best restaurant team, I've chosen the best, and tonight, my two favorite restaurants will be going head to head. They may be good, but do they have what it takes to go right to the top? We're six weeks into my nationwide restaurant competition, and so far, I've found my best Italian restaurant, Casimir from Bristol. My best Indian, Prashad from Bradford. My best Chinese, Yu and Yu in Blackburn. My best British, The Milestone in Sheffield and my best Thai restaurant, Nam Jim from St Andrews. Tonight, you'll see who'll be joining them in the semi-finals from your favorite French restaurants. I spent years learning how to cook in France, and I know just how good French restaurants can be. I'm expecting tonight's contenders to deliver something really special. May I have the peas, please, Lisa? Thank you. Talk to any Frenchman, he'll tell you they have the best restaurants in the world, with lots of British restaurants serving great French food. For centuries, French restaurants have set the standards in the dining room as well as in the kitchen. A good French restaurant will wow you with the elegance and the sophistication of its service as well as its food. From nearly a thousand nominations, I've chosen two brilliant French restaurants to battle it out for a place in my semi-finals. Winchingham Fields in Lincolnshire serves stunningly complex fine dining dishes so beautifully presented it takes your breath away. Okay, two Dory away, please. We. We know Winchingham Fields. We, we, we live it, we breathe it. And it is that nice place where you can sit down and be treated like a king for a night. Battling against them, Edinburgh's La Garrigue, headed up by a Gallic gastronome who wows his diners with simple rustic dishes bursting with flavour. Check on two goat cheese, two mackerel, two sea bath, two beef. Wait. Make it snappy, please. I'm not cooking for kings, I'm cooking for simple guys like me, for country boys. Both my French restaurants are about to face three formidable challenges designed to put them under extreme pressure. First off, I've deployed an army of 30 hungry customers who will invade each restaurant in turn and all order at once. They're on their way to sample the food on offer at the 16th century manor house and estate at Winchingham Fields in Lincolnshire. What I like most about this place is it's, it's quaint and it's like a little mini oasis. And also they depend on the local ingredients, stuff produced on their doorstep, and they turn that into the most amazing food. Hi, guys. Hi, Colin, well? good to see you. Yes, are you well? yes. I've forgotten how beautiful this place is. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. Five years ago, husband and wife team Colin and Beck put everything they had into this stunning restaurant. There's so much at stake, really, and um, I don't want it to go wrong. While Beck takes care of front of house, Colin heads up the kitchen. Service, please. Uh, ASAP, it's been, it's been waiting two minutes. He creates exciting modern dishes, capturing all the fantastic flavours of great French cuisine without the heaviness. Lobster risotto. I'm excited about this. Delicious. Colin's pulling out all the stops to put this place on the map. The restaurant boasts a five grand champagne on the menu, one waiter for every two customers, and even has its own helicopter pad. This is the, the landing facilities for the restaurant. We give them the coordinates and then uh, we just pick them up. Yeah, they've got all the staff, all the gear, the most amazing kitchen. There's obviously a lot riding on this. You can see it in Colin's face. He's under pressure, big time. We're just under five minutes from now, then my diners will be here, and they are so excited about walking into Wintingham Fields and being blown away. 
You have dedicated your life to getting this place right. Really make this count. Big test today. Two hours, 30 of my diners, two courses. Make sure they leave on cloud nine. Good luck. My 30 guests are all looking forward to being treated and fed like royalty. It should be a double. Especially together on the pass, you know, they're 18. They're cool. They're cool. The sumptuous dining room screams luxury. A very nice uh, menu for you. Colin quickly serves an amuse bouche. Not only will it prepare my guests for the meal ahead, but it also shows off Colin's expansive approach to cooking. But it's not the only thing that's expansive. After he left the appetizers, he didn't collect the menu, which are quite big. Can't really place it anywhere. Oh, Jesus, what is that? Tell us, like, this is your life, huh? All you need now is Amy and Andrews to pop out from the fucking fireplace and we're away. Huge! After the first amuse bush comes another. Carrot mousse with coriander ice cream. A little amuse bush. Yes. Bloody hell. Will you have time to get two appetizers and the two courses in? Jesus. You don't do things by half, do you? There's a lot going on. You know, honestly, sometimes less is more. They were delicious, but it was quite a lot of flavours to be served before you've actually eaten your main meal. Perhaps maybe just one would have been enough. I admire Colin's Eiffel Tower-sized ambitions to provide a stunning gastronomic experience. But the minutes are ticking by, and the theatrics show no sign of giving way to proper food. I've never seen a bread trolley outside the Humber Bridge. Is the dining big enough for trolley for bread? Yeah, it does work very well. Really? Yeah. I just watched the waiter push it by, and it was, like, banging left and right. God, it's a lot of work to slice bread at the table. It adds to the theatre of it. So 30 minutes have gone, and um, we haven't even taken orders yet. I'm not a foo food man, I'm a flavours man, and I want this food to get out of the kitchen, because when they get to taste this food, they'll be blown away. At last, orders have been taken. Colin's menu would do any French gourmet proud. It includes paper-fried Cornish bream with mussel and saffron fricassee, a beautiful ham hock and foie gras terrine, and one of my favourites, John Dory served with a birico ham and a noli pras sauce. That's really nice. Mm. Mm. That's delicious. Tastes beautiful. It's lovely. Yeah. What's the sauce on it again? The fricassee of mussels or shreds or. Yeah, very tasty indeed. Thank you. The food's going down a storm, but it's overshadowed by the service. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Boom. Any more? Look at all you guys. There seems to be an awful lot of people. I don't think it'd want any more than there is in here. Just check there's no one in here. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen the same person twice yet. <laughs> there are three front of house managers and 12 other waiting staff. What are you doing there? I'm oh, just, just making sure I just call him for service. Oh. If You'd like some tea or coffee or? No, I'm not. No, fresh orange juice? No. no. Oh, pardon. Right. Excellent. Le Noir, key manager. Yes. Yeah. Busy than Heathrow, unfortunately, just for the staff. Colin, that's one hour gone, one hour to go, yes? OK, how long on that lamb? For his mains, Colin is showcasing his unique take on the glorious French tradition of fine dining. He's serving a delicious rolled saddle of lamb with polenta. Chicken cannelloni with foie gras and an opulent lobster risotto accompanied by a parmesan twill and lobster bisque. Sauce on the plate. OK, one lamb, one lobster away, please. Uh, yeah, come on, get rid of this. Pass for me, please. The food looks amazing. But the table management system is chaotic, with too many people involved. It would be so much better if just one person took responsibility. The starters, mains, desserts, um, and then we have a little appetizer tick. Basically, the chef can see it from where he is, and everybody up here knows where they are up here. I'm not convinced. Despite all the waiting staff, this restaurant's letting my diners down. You're waiting for your main course? Yes. yes. Yeah, no, starters. 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 You haven't had your starters yet? No. I think. They've got confused and left us out. Get a little bit impatient. Benoit, Benoit. Guys? So it's just one hour, 20 minutes, with nothing in front of them. All these waiters are flying around. No starters. Not better than that. Two Dory, two Bream. Pizza. It's away now. OK, Billy. Ready? Service, please. Pizza. As time ticks on, everything's starting to get muddled up. Um, which table do you want last? Table four? 
and the full scale of the mess is only just becoming clear. Tell you what, I've got table of four here. Right? You sure that's table of four? So are you still waiting on starters? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me two seconds. My apologies. A little over an hour and a half now. Our starter. Who wants to play with no starters? We keep watching everybody else. Oh, yeah. yeah. Their food. How far is that away? Exactly a minute. OK, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Unfortunately, someone crossed it off at the top. How can you have so many management out there and they cross it off and they haven't even sent them yet? Huh? They've got more managers here than they've got in Buckingham Palace. Let's keep going, keep going, keep going. With time running out fast and some guests still not served, I'm starting to fear the worst. That's it, that's it. 20 minutes to go, Colin. 20 minutes to go. We'll get there by the skin of our ass, mate. Chicken sauce, Amy, chicken sauce. Yeah. About five minutes, so it's fucking, let's get it out. Three waiters, guys. Last table. Do you want someone help him do the ice cream? Put his garnish on. You know, but Benoit, see, the problem is, your problem is, you've given me that, which is table four and table six, right? That's it. Time out. Two hours gone. Incredibly, for the first time in this competition, not all my diners have been fed two courses. For a restaurant this good, it's embarrassing. Do I want to be judged on a vicious or do I want to have that served in front of me? It's a no-brainer. It's beautiful. I mean, just stunning. They can't tell everybody how fucking delicious it is because it's, it's gone past two hours. The only comfort for Colin is the fact that the diners that did receive their food loved it. It was nice. It was well worth waiting for. Well worth waiting for. We did wait a little longer than expected, uh, and when it came, yeah, well worth it. Once the food has arrived, you have forgotten how long we've been waiting because it was yeah. delicious. End of service, and time for me to tell Wintingham Fields whether I thought things were bon or non. Big test. Feedback from the dining room. Service, claustrophobic. I just want to pull some of the waiters out and get rid of some of the drapes. I think, you know, that kind of the staid, you know, Wintringham Fields-esque mm -hmm. service can yeah. look very... I mean, everybody If I give you direct was... feedback back from the customers that are experiencing the service being too claustrophobic... No, I appreciate it. Do you listen? Do you ignore it? No, no, not at Ignore all. it at your peril. If my diners felt that your service was claustrophobic, please listen to it, cos it's valuable information. We're looking for the best restaurant in Britain. Not just for the best food, but the best service. And it goes hand in glove. The customers loved the food, which is great news. Sadly, they didn't get a chance to taste it all cos we ran out of time. Don't worry about the foo-foo. I think you guys try too hard. And I just think you, you guys just need to chill. The minute you match the service with a level of attention to detail on the food, you've got something unique here. Go silent, needs a voice in here now, otherwise it'll be in the fucking shit. Next. Two, three minutes on a pond dauphin, please. My diners descend on Le Garic in Edinburgh as the Battle of the Bully Bays heats up. I'm not saying it to make you look stupid. No. It, needs, it needs a leader. I'm not asking you to shit on your boss. I'm looking for the nation's best French restaurants, and your nominations have led me to a fantastic place in Edinburgh. One of the best French restaurants in Scotland, a definite contender in this competition. I fell in love with French food from a very early age, so my standards are already high, and tonight I'm hoping to be inspired by this amazing little bistro. Where's the Frenchman? Where's he hiding? He's hiding, as usual. In his little dungeon. Absolutely. What's what, chef? Hi, Gordon. Are you well? Yeah? Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. And this is Yanni, my sous chef. Yanni? Nice to meet you. Likewise, good, good to see you too. Head chef Jean Michel has spent his whole life cooking in high end French restaurants. But a decade ago, he turned his back on the world of exclusive haute cuisine to open his own restaurant, serving no nonsense, no frills, French rustic fare. That reminds me of home, definitely. The style of cooking that I wanted to do was totally different. It's nothing to do with what's being done, actually, in, in restaurants nowadays. That's, that come from here. Come from the heart, it was brilliant. I'm not cooking for kings, I'm cooking for paupers, you know. <laughs> I'm cooking for simple guys like me, for country boys. Jean-Michel and sous-chef Yanni serve up flavours like delicious pan-fried scallops, the bistro classic twice-baked Roquefort souffle, and rabbit rillettes. This award-winning bistro has earned its loyal following. Yeah, that's nice. I've got the texture there. It's delicious. The minute you walk through the door at Le Garry, you really feel like you're back in France, and that's one of the biggest compliments I can pay a Frenchman. Le Garry, good evening. Jean-Michel, speaking. With food this good, combined with Jean-Michel's bonhomie, surely my coach diners can't fail to be seduced. You can do it. Lead the kitchen, drive the kitchen. Yeah? No problem. 
run the dining room, give some French charm to the service. Some of the guests will come in and think that the rabbit is a little bit intimidating. Explain. Jean-Michel's in love with Lapin, and he adores rabbit, and more importantly, sell it. Bon chance. Merci. Thank you. Aline Le Bleu. Here we go. Hi there, good evening. Hi. Welcome to La Gary. Thank you. Restaurant manager Julie and her all-French front-of-house team waste no time in laying on the charm. A little anish bouche for you. It's spring onions and cheese palmi. That's great. I'll get that for you. Thank you. How does the menu sound? Um, absolutely enticing. Enticing? Yeah. If you have any question about uh, the rabbit, the cook, no problem. OK, ça marche. Two rabbit, one meringue, one brioche. Orders are starting to come in thick and fast. Great, thank you very much. Julie and her team have done a great job of selling the rabbit. So you've got three rabbit already? Yeah. yeah. Out of six guests? Got well, happy with that. A Frenchman happy? Always happy. Nice. <laughs> Jean-Michel and Julie have a unique system of communicating. Service. Right. Julie, do you want me to tell you when you're ready for the starters and the main course? No, just bang. Just bang when we're ready. When I bang, she comes. When you bang, she comes. Sounds like a porn movie. <laughs> How's everybody up there, Julie? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. yeah. The atmosphere upstairs is buzzy and relaxed, and my diners love the food. Bon appétit. Mm. That's nice. How was the souffle? The souffle is lovely. The souffle yeah. is lovely. Good. <laughs> but the kitchen is far too relaxed for my liking, and there are some silly mistakes occurring. Jean-Michel, is that hot enough, Yannick? Is that... I think it was cold down top. Don't do it right. Send it back. The chef. You know that? One fish, two lamb, a rabbit, and an old brioche. The rabbit's flying out. Flying out. Huh? Let's go for those two rabbits, chef. I'll see you in another minute, chef. The most popular dish tonight is the saddle of rabbit with black pudding and apple. That's good to go, yeah? The meat's wrapped in fat to baste the rabbit as it cooks. Oh, that was really nice. Really good. It's all nice. It's great to see Jean-Michel using such a traditional technique, but I'm worried about how he's running his kitchen. The board is full of checks. You're halfway there, yes? This is where we're right up against it right now. Jean-Michel doesn't seem to be taking the lead in the kitchen, leaving both his brigade and front of house team rudderless. You can't get him away from the stove, this one, can you? No, he loves it. Yeah. Once he gets going, that's him. I know he loves cooking, but with so many orders on at the same time, someone needs to be taking control. Are you supposed to read his mind? Because he doesn't talk to you. Right. Huh? Jean-Michel. The rabbit's been left under the lights on the hot plate for two minutes, while Jean-Michel plates up the lamb. That rabbit goes dry within 30 yeah. seconds there, yeah? Such a shame. Do you know what I mean? This is what hurts for me. Yeah, I know. Do you know what I mean? You've, you've gone from a chef into a cook and the lamb not ready and the rabbit's standing there and it's just... Get ah. in there, get in there. Look at me two seconds. He's gone silent, needs a voice in here now, otherwise it's gonna be the fucking shit. Huh? Five, yeah. Five. Fuck me. The one ingredient I'm missing yeah, is a leader. I'm not saying it to make you look stupid. I'm, just trying, I'm trying to get the food out at the same time, and it's not my it's not my kitchen. So when the rabbit sits there for two minutes and Yannick's looking at you waiting for a call, I just it needs it needs a leader. Two, three minutes on a pond dolphin, please. <sighs> Such a shame. Jean-Michel's gone from the owner now into a cook because he's not talking to anybody. Next to go, Paul, chef. One fish, two lamb, one rabbit. Thankfully, Yannick has found his voice and sort of started holding the reins because this place needs an organiser and someone as a front runner. Yep. I love the way Yannick is tasting everything. He's proving to be the rock in the kitchen tonight. Hold on two seconds, Audrey. Audrey, bring that back, please. I'm not asking you to shit on your boss. Yeah, no, I'm But when you're he's standing there <laughs> slicing the fucking rabbit, it's gone dry. Yeah. There's two lamb to be plated up, and he's not saying anything to you. Suppose that's the way, yeah? Right, next. You cook fucking amazing food, yeah? But I don't understand why you disappear in service when you, you don't talk to anybody. Yeah. So I'm just struggling to identify who is the leader tonight. Yeah, yeah. I no, want to I find know. the best restaurant in Britain. Yeah, no, do you understand? No, I know, I and the understand. best restaurant in Britain doesn't have food that sits yeah. on the hot plate for two and a half, three minutes. We're on to desserts, always a highlight of great French cuisine. True to form, Jean-Michel's created simple rustic desserts, including brioche pan perdu with apricots. Julie, I'm so sorry, but does Chef check the desserts or do you just run out with them? Well, when he's busy like that, okay. I'm well, he's not busy. Off. He's not busy. There's only two tickets left. Please show him the desserts. Okay, yeah. A 
cursory glance just doesn't do it. He should have tasted them. It was quite tart. Yeah. It was, it was lovely. The brioche and the ice cream was absolutely delicious, but the apricots were just too tart. Too tart, uh -huh. yeah. OK. The apricots aren't ripe, and they should never have been used in the first place. Chef, um, apricot, everybody saying they're too tart. They're too tart? Um, yep. That's why I asked. Has the chef seen them an hour ago? You miss nothing going out of your kitchen, whether you're running a bistro, fine dining, or a burger store. You watch everything. Damn, what a shame. I'm a bit disappointed with the, with the dessert. I think that uh, those apricots could have been much better. There have been serious mistakes in the kitchen tonight, but what's the verdict front of house? Lamb. Lamb. It's really good. I love it. It's delicious, yeah. It's the first time I've ever tried rabbit, um, so it's lovely. Fish was uh, really meaty, wholesome, hearty. Yeah, I loved it. It was fantastic. Cheers. It's time for me to tell Le Garrigue exactly what I think. Tough night. Very tough. Every restaurant in every category is going under that level of scrutiny. It's a pressure test. We know as chefs that food shouldn't hang for a long time on the hot plate. I know. No, I have to take the blame for it. I should have stayed at the pass and, uh, and they didn't do it again because I know they can do the job. What I did love downstairs was how often everyone was tasting stuff. So when you run upstairs with apricots that the chef hasn't tasted, I'm going to ask you to come back down. Yeah. And if you tasted those apricots before they left the hot plate, I guarantee you would have said, stop. We're not serving the pamperdu with apricots. Apart from that, friendly service, bloody good food. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks oh, very much. Le Garrick has got great potential, but it has to be consistent on every plate, whether it's the most amazing starter or a phenomenal dessert. It has to be that exact standard across every plate. And Jean-Michel has to decide if he wants to cook all night long, then pass the leadership qualities to his number two. And if he wants to lead, then lead. If he wants to cook, then cook. The coast trip was a massive challenge for Wintergreen Fields and Le Garrigue. Now, I've invited both teams to London to discuss how they're getting on in the competition. But what they don't know is that secret diners sent by me have been to the restaurants. The first is restaurant critic Simon Davies. I've rigged him with secret cameras and asked him to be demanding and difficult. I'm allergic to those. I can't eat sultanas. Now we'll really see how these restaurants perform when I'm not there watching, and so will they. First to see the evidence is Colin from Wintingham Fields and his sous chef, Slavic. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you? Big test for you, wasn't it? Yeah, very much. Very, never done something like that before, so... Yeah. Um, a bit of out of your comfort zone, yeah. Unknown to you, you've actually been tested twice. I sent in... My secret diner. <laughs> and this is what happened. On the coach trip, they let my diners down with over fussy food and service, but have they learned from their mistakes? Hi there. Hello. Two appetizers for you, vichyssoise with some mackerel tart and ratatouille. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, we did not, we did not ask for these. They just came to us. First off, great welcome. Amuse Bush arrives at the table, didn't ask them, gets put down and Bang, they start eating. Uh, you'll find three different menus, but only two are available. You have the very first one, which is the lunch menu. And then if you turn the page over, you'll see a red ribbon. Uh, on the right of the red ribbon, you'll see the menu surprise. That's the one that we only do on the evening. Oh, uh, yeah, OK. A good excuse to have to come back. Uh, <laughs> on the left-hand side, however, you'll find the a la carte, which is fully available as well. We start with the main courses, and then you'll find the desserts at the back of the uh, menu surprise on the following page. The menu's big, imposing huge descriptions. It's long-winded, it's getting heavier and heavier and heavier, and they just want to be left alone. All right, that's no way. Right, so we get another amuse, amuse bouche. There's three things we've had so far that we haven't ordered. And I'm beginning to feel like I've really started to eat now, and we haven't had the first of our three courses. I hope they don't bring us another amuse bouche. Otherwise, I will be unamused, Bush. One is a really nice gesture. Great opener. Sets the tone for what's happening next. But any more than one, and it looks like you're trying too hard. Uh, roasted lobster. 
رسم اللوبستر ريزوتو ان ذا توب داون ويز ذا سيرفنج ويز ذا سويتد مورز فينش ويز ذا لوبستر بيست اند سايد تشوكليت لازر يا هاف ذا بار مزايا تشيز ثانك يو انجوي كونت بليف يو ديد ذات اي واز سو انوي وين هي بوينتد اوت ذا مورال روشن اي سوير هيز فينجر فيرتشلي تاتش ذا روشن اف نوت تاتش ذا I don't, you know, it's like, I don't want someone coming in and pointing their finger all over my food and going, oh, that's that, that's that. Bugger off. Food is exquisite. You need to look at your service. You need to really just rein that in and bring a breath of fresh air in there and you'll surprise yourself and, more importantly, attract a different clientele which you've been slightly nervous of going for. Let's go. It was great to get feedback from Gordon. It was great for him to say to me, you know, I mean, it's Gordon Ramsay telling you what's great about your cooking, what's not so good about it, and, and what to fix about it. And anyone who can say negative things about it is great, because that means we can analyze it, work it, do we need to change it. It's great feedback, you know, it's, it, it, that is priceless. Next, will the chefs be able to handle the pressure outside their own kitchens? When you dry that fish a little bit like that, when you come to sauce it, the sauce will glaze and stick exactly that. Okay, chef. He's uh, saucing the plate like he's uh, shaking hands with the queen. It's going all over the place. Refined French restaurant Winchingham Field from Lincolnshire. Service, please. It's been waiting two minutes. Is battling it out with Edinburgh's charming bistro La Garrique. You know there, one rabbit and one brioche. To become my best French restaurant. La Garrique's team, Jean-Michel, Yanni and Julie, are about to discover that one of my spies has been checking them out. I sent in expert food consultant and cuckoo writer, Sarah Durden Robertson. She knows what makes a great restaurant. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for coming. That was a tough test. It was. What you didn't know is that you've actually been tested twice. When I left La Garrique, I sent in a secret diner. Let's watch it, shall we? Yeah. Mm. My 30 diners love La Garrique's rustic charm, but the servers and food suffer from Jean-Michel's lack of leadership in the kitchen. Are things running more smoothly now? Hello. Um, table for two, Duncan. <laughs> what would you recommend? Just a... Yeah. A rear at the front. Okay. When I came in, I said I was really hungry. The starters have come out super speed. And I said, my goodness, that was quick. And she said, yes, I told the chef that you were hungry. That's very good. Nice liaison between the kitchen and the restaurant. Good. It's actually very hot in here. Even the butter's beginning to melt and go soft. It's not that hot outside. So I don't understand why it's so hot. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Mm. Oh, I'd be delighted. It's so hot. <laughs> ah, the man with the power. <laughs> we should have just asked you. If only I'd I'm known. Get sushi up this morning. Sorry, guys. <laughs> ah, I've got such it on. Are we not allowed to have that on in the morning to get the restaurant nice and cool? When butter starts melting at the table, are you cutting back on the electricity bill? No, 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 it's not like that. No, I don't know what I put in the name, just forgot to put it on or... There's a bit of a schoolboy error when we can't have the air conditioning on. Yeah. What a shame. Is it too late or could I just have boiled new potatoes? Is these are just a bit fatty. Just, just boiled new potatoes. Just let me... OK, thank you. Beans are delicious. They're lovely, quite cheap. Is that yeah? That is that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. For you. Okay, yeah. Thank you. She's bought me my placement of potatoes. I'm not a bit worried about the poor little potato, but I mean he's not your finest example. Um, talk about the um, horrible greasy soda potatoes that came out swimming in fat. They look dreadful. In the kitchen, we have to be uh, to be more. Mm. You, know. you just need to watch everything. Yeah, yeah. You can't do everything. You can't do everything. Right? No, you can't. But when you cook a stunning main course, the garnish is even as important. It boils down to the consistency again, doesn't it? Yeah. What a shame. 
I'm a bit worried you're not going to make it to the airport. Is there any way we could take these in a doggy bag? Oh, yes. Not the ice cream, obviously. So but yeah, yeah. Because I just think we're not going to make the flight in time otherwise. Yeah. Sorry, that's my fault. No, no, it's OK. Thank you very much. We can <laughs> eat it on the plane. <laughs> They do know we're in a wash now and we're ready to go, waiting for her to come and take the money. She's answered the phone, she's gone off to the kitchen. She still hasn't come to take the money. What a shame, right at the very end. Yeah. Dying to catch their flight. It's an urgent request and it's just been blatantly ignored. So it was like sort of small, little niggling facts yeah. that you put them all together. It's like a, a bit of a blow par performance. When I know, when that restaurant's on song, it's the best bistro in the country. In a way, I'm disappointed by the, 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 the potato saga. That, that's something, that's a lack of concentration, uh, a lack of supervision. The service, that's thing we can change. Uh, the cooking of the potatoes, the communication with the chefs, so that kind of thing can easily be resolved. Both restaurants have struggled. This is their last chance to impress me. I'm taking the chefs out of their kitchens and into mine, at my three Michelin starred restaurant in London, where I'm challenging them to create one mind-blowing dish. I feel very confident. We're a very, very strong team, so we are going to work <laughs> our bollocks off, and it's going to be, you know, hopefully a three Michelin star result. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> to be in this restaurant, in this kitchen today is a hell of an experience. We hate to win it. I want them to raise their game and cook like they've never cooked before. This is it. The battle of the French. Within these four walls is everything I've ever wanted, ever worked for, and I suppose my dream come true. There's no greater platform for both these restaurants today to show off. Only one restaurant going through the semi-final. Make sure it's you. And every time you put food onto that plate, think semi-final. And good luck. All the best, guys. Yes. French cuisine is close to my heart, so I can't wait to see what Jean-Michel and Colin create using fish as their main ingredient. First table on, Le Garic. Four couples away, table five. Four John Dory, please. Thank you. But it's not just me they'll have to impress. 20 distinguished guests will also help me judge both restaurants' dishes, including Gilles Quillot, head chef at the French Embassy, and food writer and novelist Joanne Harris, author of Chocolat and two popular French cookbooks. Both restaurants' front of house teams are dining here today, and Colin's dad. But they can only sit and wait while their chefs battle it out. And uh, Yannick, give me a time for the first table, please. Six or seven minutes to the past, chef. Let's go seven minutes. Thank you, Yannick. Oui. Love the information. Jean-Michel and Yannick from Le Garic have made their names with simple rustic food, but today, they're going haute cuisine. With poached John Dory, served with polenta cake and longestines, a lightly battered oyster, and a longestine bisque. Oh, gas me. <laughs> so, you run one of the best bistros in the country. This doesn't sound like a bistro classic. This sounds like you've... We, we're cooking in your kitchen today. We don't want to do bistro cooking. We try to raise our game. So you're going... Uh, you're up there, aren't you? You're, uh... We try, we try. Jean-Michel turned his back 10 years ago on fine dining because he wanted to become a little bit more rustic. But today, he's going back to that fine dining style and he's really pushed the boat out. What he had for breakfast this morning, I don't know. It must have been a fucking strong pot of porridge. I only hope Jean-Michel and sous-chef Yanni aren't overstretching themselves. Wintingham Fields, four red mullet, please. Oui, oui, chef. Colin, give me a time, please, on the first table. One, please. OK, three minutes on the four fish, please. Three minutes to the window, thank you. On the other side of the kitchen, Colin from Wintingham Fields usually has the opposite problem, creating food that's just too fussy. Colin and Slavic are exposed because they haven't got their entourage of 25 chefs and 15 gardeners and, and four, you know, individuals to wash their cars. So today they are on their own. Tonight, Colin's pan-fried red mullet and serving it with a bouillabaisse sauce and a Mediterranean salad. The whole idea about this dish is that it's a niswas, it's a salad. So each part has to be perfect, and that's what makes the dish. It's not just the flavours. You can show off, you know, you can show off courgettes and green beans, so that's yeah, good. 
OK, how intricate is it on a scale of 1 to 10? The garnish is going to be about 7 out of 10. The rest of it, 4. Wow. It's not bad for you, is it? I know, yeah. Oh, uh... Jesus. Well, I'm listening, okay. listening. <laughs> Good. Deconstructing a Niçois salad in this way is a bold move. Now he's got rid of all the distracting frills, Colin's going to have to really focus on flavours to make this work. I thought Colin on Wendy and Fields was going to go more complicated, over the top, yet he's reined it in. He's, he's gone simpler. It's a chance to concentrate and really, really show off. Over at Le Garrigue, the timing of their polenta and deep-fried oyster must be perfect. I want the polenta to melt in your mouth when you're having it, or the flavour to disappear in your mouth. It's precise cooking. Just check your place, a little bit of water there. Work together. Just try to drain that fish next time in the cloth. Yeah. When you dry that fish a little bit like that, when you come to sauce it, the sauce will glaze and stick exactly that. Yeah? Wait. Watch the sauce on the rim of the plates. Attention. As they plate up, the pressure is clearly taking its toll. Well, he's saucing the plate like he's uh, shaking hands with the Queen. It's going all over the place. It's a shame because he looks nervous, which I didn't expect, especially from a Frenchman. I don't know why I start to shake. I never shake in my life. You know, even when I got married, there was no shaking, you know? I really got them, made me shake. You know, it's incredible. <laughs> Polenta's ready, wait. Ready, ready, ready. I'll get the oysters in. You start plating. Happy with that, Chef? That's absolutely beautiful, Chef. You're perfect. In Jean-Michel's hour of need, I'm delighted to see that sous chef Yanni is stepping up to the plate again. I love the way you're tasting as well, yes? Yeah, what you're tasting, yeah, is what they're eating, yes? Let's go. Go. Last table now, please. Yeah, two John Dory away. Table three, please. Fish good to go. Polenta good to go. This, this good to go. Let's go. Jean-Michel and Yanni are really working as a team, sending out plate after plate of exquisite-looking food. Jean-Michel, they look great. Fantastic. Very nice. Go, please. A little tiny of the plate. Well done. Excellent. Go. Table four, please. Good, good, good. Thank the dish you. from Nagarik. All right, thank you. Poached John Dory and langoustine cake, oyster beignet on top, and a lobster bisque. It's very delicate. It's an explosion of flavour in the polenta. After two John Dory, table four. Four more away, please, on table five, yes? Thank Keep you. that momentum going, guys, please, yes? Colin's gone for a simple dish, so his cooking must rely on flavours, not frills. And I'm not sure he's nailed it. Before he passed it, it tasted mm, fragrant and like a light bouillabaisse. But it's almost like it's lost its fishiness and it's done more, more veggies. You want it to taste of what's on that fish, exactly. Huh? Fine. Okay. Today, they have to make sure that dish is all about flavour, not how things look. Stavik, how long, please? 10 seconds, fish, 10 seconds. Yeah. Work together, come on, guys. Gently check your plates. Nice. Come on. Wait. Work together, work together, work together. Yeah. Vibrant colours. Love the idea of the egg yolk on there. Let's go. Good. Happy with those, Colin? Oui, chef. Yeah, they look fantastic. Go. Table one, please. Go. Beautiful. I love that level of creativity and the confidence to be that simple with that red mullet. Brilliant. Last table, yes? Make it look absolutely perfect, like the first table, yes? OK, great. Table three, please. Let's go. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Step us back, here. please. Sorry. Thank Good. you very much. Well sorry. spotted, Slavic. Colin, get over every one of your dishes, yes? Come on. Wait, a little bit. Good. OK, thank you. Good. Excellent. OK. You're so pan-fried red mullet. You have tomato fondue, courgettes, and finished with potato galette on top. Colin's presentation is brilliant, and I'd expect nothing less. But I hope his dish is as successful as Le Garrigue's. Oh, that's delicious, isn't it? That's really good. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. That involves a little bit of skill to get something out that's still sizzlingly crispy all the time as well. Service is over, and it's time to find out which of these two incredible dishes my guests preferred, starting with Wintringham Fields. Nice to see you. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> now, let's talk fish. Um, red mullet, how was it? Really nice and crispy on the edge. You really like when it's crispy. Beautiful. Yeah, it's really good. And what do you think of the sauce? I love that. It's one of my favourite things, you know, bula Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really good. What good. do you think? Provençal. Provençal, exactly. Summertime, and yeah, it's really simple, and I really like it. I thought the red mullet was absolutely fantastic. Um, when it came out, the, the skin was really nice and crispy, and it was still very fresh and hot from the pan. It was like being in the Mediterranean, you know, on a sunny day, sunshine on a plate. The fish was slightly overcooked for me, but overall, uh, it's, it was a really good dish. Ladies, 
Let's talk John Dory. How was it? On the whole, I think it was very nice. Good. The whole balance of the dish was beautiful and the flavours were very complementary to yeah. each other. We all found, I think, that the oyster was a slightly odd thing because we couldn't quite tell what it was. Yeah, interesting. Johnny Dory, I loved the, um, loved the fish um, and really delighted by the oyster. I thought that was a real treat. Both French teams have excelled themselves in my kitchen, serving up exquisite food worthy of their reputations and mine. I think to go through the semi-finals would be, would be excellent for the restaurant and for everyone back in Edinburgh, all the staff we've worked with, I think it would be a, a dream come true for us all. We'll see what the punters are thinking, and then we'll take it from there. I was happy with everything that went out. There was nothing I wasn't happy with. Each individual part was cooked the way I wanted it to be cooked. So everything went out, I'm happy. Now I must decide which team has that all-important je ne sais quoi to take them through to the semi-final. The chefs from my top two French restaurants, Colin from Wintergham Fields in Lincolnshire and Jean-Michel from La Garrique in Edinburgh, have just finished the service of their lives. Two exceptional restaurants, but only one can stay in the competition. To help me choose, I'm going to taste each team's dish. Visually, both dishes look attractive. Great finesse. So, let go eat first. This guy surprised me today. Polenta, lined inside with longestine, ambitious and dangerous. Mmm. Tastes very good. John Dory. Sauce is delicious. Rich, robust, and a really nice sort of shellfish bisque. Really good. Does it need the oyster fried at the end? Not really, no. And the sauce is the, is the key there. A lot of heart, true French passion all over that plate. Wintergham Fields, red mullet, crisp. You can hear it as we cut across. Beautiful. Hmm. Delicious, packed full of flavour. The intriguing part there is the sauce. It's like a sort of tomato bouillabaisse bisque. Very clever. And it looks intricate, but it is very, very simple and bloody delicious. This is a tough call, because they've really surprised me. And I'm more surprised with Jean-Michel, because I didn't think he had the capabilities of doing that. And I didn't think that Colin could rein it in. Two outstanding French restaurants, but only one can win a place in the semi-finals. OK. OK. The winner today is based on everything we've experienced. Colin, you pulled it back. You sort of reined it in, which I didn't expect to see today. That dish, delicious. Le Garrique, excelling is difficult under pressure, but you pushed the boat out. Think of the journey when we started off with 30 diners turning up unexpectedly. For any restaurant anywhere in the country, that is immense pressure. I mean, really immense pressure. Both restaurants handled it brilliantly well. After that, I then secretly filmed your restaurants in operation, unknown to any of you, to make sure that you weren't just rolling out the red carpet because it was me. And that told me a lot. So, Based on everything I've seen, everything I've eaten, and everything I've experienced, the winner is going to come down to this. The restaurant that I want to go back to. Is it the Le Garrique, that, that French charm, that real come in, sit in my front room with an ambiance that is electric? Or is it the sumptuous restaurant with rooms that you walk in and you're sort of blown away with that charm? Tough. The winner of the French category. It's Wintergham Fields. Congratulations. Jean-Michel, you surprised me today, and you are a credit, not just to your restaurant, but to your country, because you showed flashes of brilliance. Don't stop. Well done. Well done, well done.
I'm a bit disappointed, but uh, at the same time, very pleased with what we've done today. Uh, we're going to take it back to La Garrigue and, um, and take it from there and we'll start again. Yeah. <laughs> Great result for us, which I'm really chuffed to bits with. Gordon Ramsay, one of the most famous chefs in, in the world, um, telling me that, you know, he likes my food and he wants to go back to my restaurant. So, yeah, how big do you get on top of that? You know, it's fabulous. So, yeah, really, really, really chuffed to bits with it. Winter on fields forever. I've been on the most amazing journey of these two French restaurants, and it's quite sad to say goodbye to the Garrigue. However, the journey starts now for Wintergum Fields. They so deserve their place in the semi-final.